Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for being here. My name is Eugene D. Pasquale, uh, Pennsylvania Auditor General, and here with Representative Maloney, and um, also who couldn't make it just because something developed in his district, but he did plan on being here, was also uh, Democratic Whip Mike Hanna as well, but he did want me to say his regard. So I'm here to announce that my team will immediately start an audit of the Pennsylvania Game Commission. The Game Commission plays an important role in the lives of millions of Pennsylvanians and has a major impact on the Pennsylvania economy. Two million Pennsylvanians identify themselves as hunters and trappers. Each year, the Game Commission sells almost one million hunting licenses, putting the Keystone State in the top three states in the nation for numbers, for numbers of licensed hunters. The economic impact of hunting in Pennsylvania is almost $2 billion. While the Game Commission does not receive a direct appropriation from the state's general fund budget, it handles a significant amount of money each year, including nearly $7 million per year in timber sales and more than $23.3 million in revenue from oil and gas leasing, which saw a three-fold increase between 2008 and 2014. This is the first performance audit of the Game Commission in nearly a decade. I look forward to a constructive and positive audit uh, to provide an independent assessment of the Commission's revenues and expenditures. My team will evaluate the Commission to ensure its resources are being used to benefit the millions of Pennsylvanians who enjoy hunting, trapping, and other outdoor recreational activities. My team will conduct a thorough audit that I anticipate will be completed later this year, although to be clear, I want everyone to know this, um, I always tell my team to be as a thorough and as efficient as possible, but I want to make sure that it's both thorough and efficient, so I never give them a specific timeline on the audit. The audit will cover three fiscal years, July 1, 2014, through June 30, 2017, with the ability to go back even further if necessary. For each year that we audit, we will identify and analyze all sources of commission revenue, identify and analyze all commission expenditures, and determine each fund's year end balance, including any and all money held in escrow or restricted accounts. We'll be determining if expenditures, including the acquisition of property, were in compliance with all appropriate state laws, including the fiscal affairs and property and building aspects of the game and wildlife code and any associated regulations. In other words, we're making sure they follow the law. In addition to licensing hunters and trappers, the Game Commission owns almost 1.5 million acres of state game lands in 65 counties, manages wild birds and mammals, develops wildlife habitats, and works with private landowners to provide free access to their hunting and trapping. And before I open the floor to questions, I want to give um, huge commendation to Representative Maloney. Um, we may be of different parties, but he and I are friends, but he has been on me tirelessly to do this audit for at least a year and a half, right? Mm -hmm. um, and at some point, you're like, well, Dave, I don't want to get in trouble with Dave, so we got to do the audit. But in all seriousness, um, this is something that I think is a long time coming, and Representative Maloney deserves a lot of credit for getting us to this point. But I also want to make it clear that leadership of both sides of the aisle in the House, um, on the Democratic side particularly, Representative Hanna, and on the Republican side particularly, Representative Reid, but I don't want to say they're the only ones, were also writing in letters in support of this audit happening. So this is a bipartisan support in the legislature, but again, I wanted to give Representative Maloney his appropriate due because he was a tireless advocate for me starting this audit. And with that, I want to um, welcome Representative Maloney uh, for him to um, offer any thoughts. And then from there, more than happy to answer any and all questions. Thank you, and good afternoon. There is a lot that I could say today. I think uh, the Auditor General really hit on many of the most important aspects of why we need to do this. And I really want to thank him for that because he has had a plateful. And in the last couple years, as he mentioned, some audits have come up that have delayed this. And I think that is some of the things that it's important to note that um, because of that, this has taken a little bit of time. He's mentioned the bipartisan um, support that we've uh, received, which I think is significant and important. 
I think there's a few things that have really concerned the sportsmen across the state. I hear from them on all geographical areas on a regular basis. Um, I believe that our, that our heritage as sportsmen and, and what we have here in Pennsylvania is important. I think it's special. And, um, and there's some things that I'd like to touch on that I think um, have been paramount in my concern for transparency and accountability. I've always felt that if we had both of those things, we can always justify and we can always plan and adjust moving forward. I've been very concerned about our state bird. Our state bird is not only a significant piece of our history, but it's also a game bird and it needs habitat. And we have been told over and over and over that our state bird's habitat is in crisis. Well, look, <laughs> let's talk about just the comment from the Game Commission's own um, biologist. I believe the comment that, has, that was made is grouse in Pennsylvania are in a pretty dangerous place. That's concerning. It's been concerning for a long time. The number one reason for hunting license sales in Pennsylvania and nationwide is to pursue white-tailed deer. We know that we have about 200,000 declined numbers in hunters, and that's for a reason of what they have concerned with, and that is the mismanagement of that wildlife. I'd like to, I'd like to comment and quote probably our biggest conservation president in the history of the United States, Teddy Roosevelt. He said, we are the caretakers. And I truly believe that that should be the mission, especially under Title 34 and what we do with our wildlife. He said, wildlife resources are a public trust. To me, there's no better way to have public trust than transparency and accountability which I believe our Auditor General is willing to find out some of the things that have taken place in the past. One of the things I want to mention about the conflict that we often have is the fact that people bring up politics. Politics, to me, is in everything we do. And one of the biologists from the Game Commission stated years ago, the deer management was not done under science, but politics. I think that is a misguided endeavor, and I think that type of admittance is one of the reasons why we're here today. We have seen checks written for $250,000 at a time given to nonprofits. We've had a major ethics violation take place. These are all things that we didn't do. The sportsmen of Pennsylvania did not do. But this is one of the reasons that we need accountability and transparency as to where the funds are going, as the Auditor General already mentioned, with gas leases, timber sales, and so on. So if we be proactive with what our mission is, then I think we can straighten this problem out. So thank you kindly for all your time. And thank you, sir, for your work. You got it. Thank you, Representative. And more than happy to answer uh, any and all questions. Dennis? Why has it been a decade since you've audited? Well, I haven't been in office for a decade. Uh, fair enough. But why um, have your office? Uh, no. Uh, good question. It's a good question. I would say that in my first term, admittedly, it was not on one of the campaign priority list because when I was first running, but soon after I was reelected, Representative Maloney brought this to my attention and we added it right to the queue. But schools, I believe, are on a regular cycle, right? Every other year? They're mandated right? audits, yes. This is not a mandated audit. So, yeah, I mean, in theory, I mean, again, we're doing the audit, but in theory, you never have to do this one. Uh, your, uh, your news release, your statement talked about revenues, expenditures. Representative Maloney is talking specifically about uh, rough grouse habitat and deer herd management. Is your audit going to get into whether or not the deer herd is being properly managed? We will be looking at the regulations of the Game Commission and making sure they comply with the regulations. For example, when we look at something that is based on science, 
or what is supposed to be based on science, we don't go in and question the science. We go making sure that they're following the proper procedures. And so in that sense, is that it, this will touch those? We, it, will, it will touch those subjects, correct. Can I make one comment? Oh, sure. And sir, and to all that are here, we have conducted legislative budget and finance reports within our own establishment here with respect to numbers. We have numbers that show hundreds of millions of dollars of lost revenue for those, per, for those specific reasons that you asked, sir. Uh, let me sort of walk through an example of what we normally do on our normal school audits. For example, on the background checks with the school bus drivers, what we do is we make sure they're following the proper procedure on who's driving those buses. In a sense, our process for auditing this is no different. We're making sure that they're following the rules and regulations, not determining what the actual science should be. Representative, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not quite getting it. You, you seem to be saying we have a feeling that they're not doing something they should be doing, but what specifically is your concern? And you mentioned politics versus the science. Give me a specific example of, of what you're talking about there as governing policy. Okay. So under Title 34, the Game Commission is commissioned to serve the sportsmen of Pennsylvania. And with some of the policy changes that they have made, for instance, north of Route 80, um, we have uh, Chamber of Commerce who have been in front of this for quite some time with the economic loss due to lack of interest, due to the 200, 250,000 sportsmen who have bailed out. Um, so, so that economic loss and those decisions of policy are part of those legislative budget and finance reports and some of those things that, let's just take the uh, rough grouse as, as was mentioned. If we do not have the product, then we will not have the pursuing of it. And so that economic decline that follows that is significant. I came from Union County today for this meeting. I went to different game commission meetings back in 2004 when they had their quarterly meetings, 2006, 2007. And I stood in front of the commissioners and said to them, you lose your deer herd in the state of Pennsylvania and you'll go bankrupt. And several of them sat there in their chairs behind the table and laughed at it. And I told them that several times. Last year they said they were $8 million short to meet their budget, I believe. They wouldn't have lost 200,000 some hunters. They would have had their $8 million. Thank you. That is one of the, we're certainly going to get under the hood on that. You, you already know that the state's losing millions of dollars, that the deer aren't here, there's a lot of other wildlife, turkey and grouse aren't. They're not doing their job. Now, why is it so hard to just can't replace the game commission? I mean, the commissioners, the people that are running the game, just get rid of them. Get people that want to run the game commission for the benefit of the hunters. Yeah. That's what they're supposed to be doing. I uh, say so technically, I can only review their current operations. I believe they have terms of office, and it's up to the governor then to replace them through their terms of office. I can, I can in theory, rep recommend some changes to the process, but it's up to the governor and the terms of office that they're in. And I believe it's set up that no governor gets to actually, in one term, meaning four years, stack the deck, so to, sp stack the deck, so to speak. And that's by design. Other questions? I just have a comment on uh, what you said uh, about being stacked. And I don't care if it's Republican or Democrat. It's been stacked for years as far as I'm concerned. And a unified sportsman feel that way. Because who is appointing these commissioners? DCNR approval, Audubon Society approval, the Senate rubber stamps it, and then the governor rubber stamps it. That has to be changed. During our process, what is our website? Um, I know it's paauditor.gov, but they can find, there's ways that you, if there, people have issues that they want us to ask during this audit, go to our website, submit the issue that you have, and feel free, and then we can add that to some of the questions we asked during it. So it's paauditor.gov, and then there's a way to submit things that you want us to look at. And if there are things that through your expertise and what you do um, as sportsmen that you think are, uh, other areas that we need to look at, please submit those issues. And believe me, we've had that from employees in school districts 
to in state agencies, whether you, and if you want to stay confidential or not, I know by you being here and asking the question in person, that may not be your number one priority is staying confidential, but we follow up on all of those leads. Sometimes they lead nowhere, sometimes they lead to major discoveries. I'd like to add to that, sir. I have been contacted, as I said uh, earlier, not only by and through sportsmen uh, across the state, but I have been contacted by people not only in the management of the Game Commission and Fish Commission, but the Game Commission today, but by people on the ground, boots on the ground, who don't want to identify themselves, and some people from the upper office who have approached me personally and said, please keep up the fight because we do not agree with the direction of our administration. So that's a good point as to how you can contact them. Dennis? My last question, kind of piggybacks on Mark's question, is you're an auditor, right, a dollars and cents guy. Do you sense that things that you look at can have an actual impact on the number of the things these guys are talking about, which is the number of game that are in the woods? But when we did our report that found that there were over 3,000 untested rape kits, and now we're down to 1,200, and going from 40% police department compliance to 90%, and again, I want that number to be zero on untested rape kits, but that makes an impact. I guarantee you, after we found those convicted felons were driving those school buses in Lancaster, I know what every school district in Pennsylvania was doing that day. They were going to make sure that their background checks were done on all those school bus drivers. So can our audits have an impact? The answer is absolutely yes. There's no question that there have been times that I've gotten the loggerheads with some of the audits we've done. But I know this much, if we find something wrong, I don't think there's anybody more bulldogged than me about trying to drive the change. You win some, you lose some, I get that. And I mean, I'm not a dictator, but on the same token, if there's something wrong, if there's something wrong there, nobody's gonna be a stronger advocate for the hunters and the sportsmen of this state than me. Any other questions? If not, thank you everyone for your time and have a great rest of the day.